Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a good Wednesday night. It is November 4th, and today we're going to be talking about the tropics. Um, so yes, thank you guys. We are at 229 subscribers now, so thank you guys uh, for that. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's get started with the video. Uh, so right now we currently have a tropical uh, depression. Uh, I'm pretty sure yesterday, yeah, yesterday we had a major hurricane. Um, it was major hurricane Ada, and now we just have tropical depression Ada. So you guys can see the remnants of it is in this area right here. We have some convection, um, a lot of convection right here, and a lot of convection in the south. Um, and we have a what looks to be like a big front that actually goes all the way down to this, um, with a strong low up in uh, the Arctic. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna be seeing this move slowly moving northeast um, in about about the next week. In about a week from now, we could start to see impacts in the U.S. So we'll have to see. Actually, maybe even less than a week now. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be looking at that in today's video. Um, but we can see right now, this is the infrared. Um, we can see, like I said, tropical depression, Ada. We have some kind of disturbance with some cloud cover in the central U.S. No rain, though, with that as of right now. I think there's probably there's some light rain and drizzle in some areas, but that's about it. Um, And, of course, like I said, we have this big front and... Actually, no clouds in the west and no clouds in the east. It's a very nice day for both both of the both of those area areas. Other than the northwest, northwest has been kind of rainy uh, today. Oh, so yeah, that's what's going on at the infrared right now. Um, let's switch to the National Hurricane Center here. So this is the cone of our tropical system now. Um, tropical Depression Ada, as you guys can see, it's forecasted to leave. Um, land and go into back into the waters about Thursday night into Friday morning. And then by Saturday morning, it's forecasted to become a tropical storm again, hit Cuba. And then by Monday, it's going to start to get really close to the U.S. It's actually, this is trending faster. It's now trending to be moving a little bit more quick. Um, so it's, we could be seeing a quicker moving storm. Um, it's no longer going to go to the east of Florida. Most likely it's going to go to the west of Florida. I say the chance of it going to the east of Florida is very low, as of right now. I think I'm, it's most likely going to go to the west of Florida. National Hurricane Center also thinks that now. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be keeping an eye on this pretty much every day. Um, so yeah, now let's actually look at some of these tracks here. So this is the global and hurricane model guidance here. As you guys can see, some of the models still have it going to the west and going to the eastern Pacific. Um, but pretty much all of them have them going this way and then up here and impacting Florida and the southeast in some kind of way. Um, and then the GEFS tracks. Um, we can see actually some of these GFS, this one GEFS track, actually two of them, that is one, has this thing being a pretty strong storm of uh, an MSLP of nine, between 980 and 970. I'll see how we can see the mean is kind of this. Um, is that line right there? So that's the most likely track. That's kind of like the what all that's what what most of the models or the G. What well, that's what most of the GFS tracks were saying. Um, it's kind of like the blend of all these. And we can see as it going up, hitting Western Cuba and going to the west of Florida. Um, now a few of these models still have it going to the east of Florida. They're trying to. And now the the GEPS uh, tracks as this thing going up and hitting the Florida Panhandle or. Just Florida, and none of them haven't gone to the east anymore, so that's good. Um, so we're kind of narr narrowing down where this is actually going to go. Um, and yeah, we'll have more info, or I'll have more information on that in tomorrow's video on where it's likely going to go. As of right now, I'm thinking it's going to impact western Cuba and go to the west of Florida and impact southern Florida, central Florida, and north Florida. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to see. Um, now let's just talk about this. So this is the sea surface temperatures for the whole world right now. Uh, we can see right now where our where uh, Ada just went. Waters are really warm for tropical activity. Um, and then, but the northern Gulf is actually pretty decent. It's it's under twenty six degrees Celsius in those green shades. So that is cooler. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna see, we're gonna see that uh, if that actually affects uh, Ada and it's re strengthening. Um, cooler waters. Um, and as as you guys can see here, we are in a pretty pretty moderate La Nina. As you guys can see right here, we are in a moderate La Nina. Um, almost 1.5, or we are 1.5 below. Um, 
So that is good to see service temperatures in this area. And that area is right here. As you guys can see, we are clearly kind of in a La Nina. Looking at those right there, those temperatures are are colder than this whole area. Um, so yeah. Now let's start looking at well, what these models have or where these models have ADA actually going. So we're looking at the GFS. So the GFS is this thing impacting central and eastern Cuba, pretty much all of Cuba, bringing some rain in the western Cuba, moving very slowly. And by next Wednesday, it has it uh, shrinking right over Key West and is lingering over them. It hasn't moving, it hasn't moved south again and hitting Cancun. Um, kind of weird. Um, the way that does not happen, that would not be good. But uh, GFS for sure is showing some weird things. Uh, so let's take a look at the Canadian. Canadian also is this thing hitting eastern Canada. And then it has it going up, hitting some southern Florida and going to the east of Florida and kind of drifting out into the Atlantic. Um, then the European. The ECMWF is this thing still hitting central Cuba and curling up and hitting Florida as a very strong, as a potentially strong hurricane. Let's actually look at the MSLP here. A 987 uh, hurricane, which is probably a Cat 1 or maybe a low-end Cat 2, most likely a Cat 1. Then hitting Florida. And then moving northeast, kind of down, yeah, we can see the remnants of it next Saturday right there. So the hardest impacts of the U.S. are likely going to be sometime between Monday and Friday. We're going to have to see it because these models are not really agreeing on where this thing is going to go. GFS is this thing doing loop-de-loops and stuff. Um, doing weird things. It has, a, has, a, has a strengthening a whole lot over Miami and then going southwest and hurting Cancun a lot. And then the... Uh, Canadian has this thing going, like, it's going to kind of to the east of Florida and doing weird things, too. European's probably the most realistic I've seen. It just has it uh, kind of doing, this, going back and forth. Oh, so yeah, we're going to have to see what this thing actually does. Um, let's talk about a different uh, topic, something we actually know is going to happen. Uh, we're going to talk about the winter weather, um, because we do have an upcoming winter storm, and this one could be pretty bad for Montana. As you guys can see, we're going to have a big uh, system slam the West Coast. Not slam, but hit the West Coast. And move inland and strengthen. We already have a 984 millibar lows. It's Saturday night now. We have some a lot of heavy mountain snow and a very windy day in the, the plains. Um, and then as we go to Sunday afternoon, this is when it's going to get it's gonna start to get bad for Montana Sunday morning. We can see northwestern Wyoming, western and almost eastern Montana is getting hit by heavy snow. Maybe even blizzard, li actually likely blizzard conditions. In this area, um, 983 millibar low. Um, my pen's not working right. Um, then in the afternoon, this just gets worse for northern Montana. We can see very heavy snow and blizzard like conditions. We actually take a sounding for this. We have surface winds, it doesn't really show, but this is definitely weird. 24 degrees, that's not blizzard. Yeah, possible hazard type is blizzard. Um, yeah, this does look pretty bad. If we take one from up here, it's not blizzard because we don't have enough winds, it's just 14 degrees of some snow. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty interesting storm, and it moves north. This is kind of stayed consistent from yesterday. We can actually go back a few model runs. So let's go to what hours? This is hour ninety six. So let's go to hour ninety six. So we can do this quick. So we can see that we go back a few model runs, and it's not really shifting anywhere. It shifted a little. It shifted a little west and a little bit to the west since the past couple model runs. Yeah, it's shifted. It's shifting to the west a little bit. This is the center of the low. Um, so yeah, we're going to see how that changes. Though. If it shifts any more further west, it's probably going to affect areas like this, and not so many, not so much areas like that. Um, it used to be affecting areas like this, but it shifted west. Uh, so yeah, we're going to see what that actually does. Um, now we do maybe have a we have a second winter storm, and this is not going to be really a big deal. Um, this is just a second winter storm as. No, 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 I'll show you guys that real quick. Uh, so for day two, or not day two, for our second winter storm, uh, we can see we have this one. It moves up into Canada, brings some set in Canada. And on the bottom end of that, we have a second one that kind of forms. This could just bring some snow and some mixing uh, in of like sleet and freezing rain for some areas like Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Northwest Missouri, Wisconsin, and, and uh, Minnesota. So not, not really a big deal, not like a widespread snow event at this, but we have a different type of thing. We could be seeing uh, maybe some severe weather. I've actually seen a potential for not severe weather, maybe some thunderstorms. 
which some good could be severe. Let's take some, or let's look at some stuff here. So this is Tuesday afternoon. We actually have tape of uh, making it all the way up into Michigan somehow. Um, but the, 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 we have okay cape areas of eastern Texas. Okay, cape that could support maybe a little bit of, of something. Yeah, so that is surface based cape. Let's actually take a sounding view right here. Marginal severe surface base 1001. ML is 514. That's not good. I don't, it's going to be hard though to actually see if we can get anything out of that. Let's look at bulk shear. So bulk shear in that area is good. Um, let's look at helicity. We have a lot of helicity with our, by the, kind of by our low pressure. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of helicity making its way down though. Only around maybe 200 if you're, if you're lucky. And, not gonna look at that. Let's look at lift. We have any lift? All right, so we have lift of negative four. Definitely not what we had last summer. Where we had like values of negative thirteen and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be hard to see if we can actually get anything out of this. But maybe we could have like a marginal rest next Tuesday. Um, maybe for this area, we're not to see though. Uh, let's actually look at the. Oh yeah, let's look. Let's look at the jet. All right, so yeah, this, this jet definitely could support something. This looks really, really good. All right, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to have to see about that. We're going to have to see if it's actually uptrends or if it just disappears. The, 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 any, any, any bit of threat we have for severe weather, that could just diminish in one moment. So we're going to have to uh, see if that actually does happen. But yeah, that'll wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, but yes, bye.